In this first part of the theme, I will be using Windows. However, all the steps shown in the tutorials will be the same in GNU Linux and Mac, unless otherwise indicated. First of all, we will start by cleaning the main folder of Manim. We are only interested in the following files, the others can be deleted. We open the document example scenes, which is a Python file. Here are the codes of the animations we saw in the installation. During the course, I will be using different code editors, so you can familiarize with them. To start, I will use Sublime Text. The first line starts with a hash mark. This means that I'm going to write a comment, text which is not a code. Everything at the right side of the hash mark will be comment, and everything at the left side will be code. Then the first comment is at the third line. What this comment does is to import all manim comments. If we don't write it, we can't use any manim comment. For the most recent versions, this line was replaced by another, but it's still the same. The manim packages are in the manim leaf folder. If you delete that folder, you will not be able to use any manim comments either. Here we can also see the document that the third line refers to. If we open it, we see that it contains the set of all many packages and Python plugins such as numpy, math, random, etc. Don't edit this file if you don't know what you are doing. In the folder Old Projects are the codes of the old animations of 3Blue1Brown. Some of them can be compiled and some others can't because some codes are no absolute, or some files as images or data are missing. In further videos, I will teach how to use Manim by your own using these files as reference. In the folder Active Projects, we can find the codes of the projects in development, that is, for future 3 blue one brown videos. Once they are finalized, they go to the old projects folder. The first thing we will learn is how to export an animation from the code. For Python, each animation is a class of the scene type. For now, I will not go into the topic because it is very extensive, so for practical purposes, we will define that a class is the set of codes that generate an animation like the two that we saw at the end of the installation. Later, we will see what is a class with more detail. The classes are created with the command class, followed by the name we assign. Now the rules to make these names. First of all, you can start with a number. It has to be a letter or a underscore. And secondly, it can be called the same as a reserved word, such as for, class, from, etc. However, Python does recognize the difference between uppercase and lowercase, unlike other programming languages. So, get creative when you name a scene, that you won't coincide with a reserved word. Finally, you can't use spaces but underscore and numbers. After the name, you write scene in parentheses to indicate that it is a class of the scene type. At the end, there is a colon, which indicates the beginning of the class. The next line starts with an indentation, which is mandatory, since Python does recognize it. If they are not treated correctly, indentations can generate errors. Now the next method construct. A method is composed by the reserved word def, space, method name, and in parentheses the reserved word self. We will delve into this subject of methods later. It is very important to having in mind that every scene, absolutely every scene, must have a method called construct. In this method, the progress of all the animation is indicated. Later, we will see a way to omit this method, but for now, we will always include it. As the classes, methods end with a colon, and in the next line is also added another indentation. From now on, it starts the animation code. In the file examplescenes.py, we can see five different scenes, including right stuff and square to circle. 
the ones we saw at the end of the installation to verify that Manning worked. Now we were going to export the first animation so you can understand how the code works. For this we go to Manning folder where Manning Live is located. This directory which contains these files we will name it main Manning folder. To be able to export the animations we have to open a terminal in this directory. With the terminal open in the Manim directory, we execute the following. Python script m Manim. Mac and Linux users will surely have to add a 3 at the end, because these operating systems tend to have multiple versions of Python, so we must specify the version 3.7. The code script m Manim can be replaced by Manim.py. It's up to you which one you want to use. Then you write the name of the file that .py, where animations code are. In this case, is example scenes .py. We will see later how to locate the animations field in other directories. After the .py file, we write the name of the scene. In our case, we want to compile the opening many example scene. At the end, the properties of the video file to be exported are specified. The code script p L means preview in low quality. The P indicates that when you finish rendering the video, it will open automatically. The L means the video will be 480p at 15 frames per second. Later, I will make a video to specify the rendering options. Click enter and the video will start rendering. As we can see, the video has opened automatically. Instead of L, write M and see what happens. To finish with this first part, let's create a new scene in the example scenes file. To give you an idea of how it works, I'll call this scene first scene. Note that when I click enter after the colon, it automatically generates an indentation. Then we write the method construct. We will create a variable called text. In analogous way to the classes, the names of the variables can't start with a number, nor be called the same as a reserved word, nor have spaces. Besides, they can be called the same as the classes or the methods. This variable is going to be a text. To create text, we use the command text m object. And the text we want to write is enclosed in parentheses and then closed in double quotes. By clicking enter, we can still see the indentation. Remember that if it is not used correctly, it generates errors. Once the text has been created, it is not added to the screen. The command self.add is used to add it to the screen, and the name of the object to be included in the screen is enclosed in parentheses. We will explain later what the command self means. For now, we will understand it as the variable in which all the objects that are shown on the screen are added. The command add means that we are adding an object. In this case, the object is a text. Now we will export this code. In this case, we will not export it as a video, but as an image. To export animation as images, write script ps instead of script pl. We can see that I was wrong to write the name of the first scene scene. If this happens, the terminal will alphabetically display a list of all the scenes that are in the .py file that we are compiling. At the bottom, it tells us to write the last number that we want to export. In this case, we write 1, and we can see that we have exported the following image. This scene that we have created can't be exported as a video, since it has no duration. If you try, you would get an error from FFmpeg. In the next video, we will see how to export this scene as a video.
This part of the terminal indicates the directory that contains the files that we have exported. In another video we will see how to change this directory. We have finished with the first part of the theme 1. In the next video we will learn to do some basic animations with text and to include pauses.